Hello, welcome to WGSN TV Going Solo Network. We are the number one singles talk network, and we're so happy to have you here with us tonight. This show is called Going Solo with Cece. I am Cece Schatz, your host. I'm the doyen of relationship building. And we are, our website, I want to make sure I give that to you, is goingsolomedia.com. So all of our wonderful shows, our hosts, our great guests, I mean, our awesome guests are on there. So just check it out, goingsolomedia.com. Of course, we are broadcasting live right here on the WGSN DB Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. So if you join us there, please do. We'd love to uh, have you come on board, make a comment, um, listen to the show, maybe listen to it twice because you never know what you might have missed the first time. And uh, we have a lot of rebroadcasts and we want to thank you all for listening. So let's get on with what we do. Those of you that don't know me, I really am a connector. I try to help bring people to the other side through that transition of what they're going through, maybe relationship loss, transition into dating and dating. And I do that by connecting them with some really awesome people and help them through that difficulty that they might very well be having. We want to get them unstuck, right? We want to get you unstuck. And that's what the show is about. We have a wonderful guest here tonight. I'm going to bring her right up and forward so you guys can have a look at her so you can see her in person. Hello there. We have Hello. Laura and it's a Bon Rigato. Laura Bonarigo. <laughs> I knew I would mess it up as I go. Don't to do worry. It. Uh, Laura, I tell you, you have been all around, you know, really sharing your information with other mm-hmm. people. You've been on USA Today, you've been on Dr. Laura, Divorce Force, Hitched, Parenting Bookmark, Your Tango, and now going solo media. And we want to thank you for joining us. But you really have um, focused your your life really in through that transition, and you are a um, you know you're an, an I, ICF a, a certified divorce coach, a certified life coach. So you have really devoted your life into helping other people, and we want to thank you for your service in that and helping those around you because I really do feel that. Um, you know, individuals like you truly make a difference in the lives out there today. So thank you for that. But share with us a little bit before we get into our topic of making peace with the possibility of being single. Yes. Tell us a little bit about your life and how you decided to go into helping others through this uh, very important transition that we have. Sure, sure. Well, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation. It's nice to meet a new community of people. Um, I have been involved with the conversation around divorce for many, 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 many years. Uh, my first divorce was when I was seven, and that was my parents' divorce. And, you know, families don't recognize the fact that that's their children's first divorce. And that really affected my relationships with men, my relationship with my parents. It made me think a great deal about um children and having children and all those things that girls when I was a kid were thinking about, but also we often think about, right? Mm -hmm. And then I, I was a really good Catholic girl and I married my first lover and was married right out of college and divorced in my early twenties, fortunately with no children. Um, And so that was really hard. Here I was having done everything right, really, um, upset. I, I, I had broken my vows. It was it was a sin the way I had been raised. And I had to really come to peace with the fact that I had done something that was so against my value system. And once I started on that personal growth path, I thought, okay, I'm ready for my next relationship. I'm ready to get married. I want a relationship. I want children. And I married in my early 30s. And I have two great kids. Um, They're much older now. And we had 15 years of marriage. And then it took five years in New York City to get divorced. We started in mediation. We ended up in trial. And it was incredibly expensive and incredibly difficult. And I thought, no one has to go through this. And I think the hardest part about it wasn't so much the legal ramifications or the co-parenting or the dating. It was the loneliness. And the fact that I messed up again, how could I possibly have done this again? And so I made it my life's mission to figure it out, to figure out this whole thing about relationships and to figure out how it was to be in a relationship and how it was to be single. 
And, um, and I just became determined not to let somebody else go through this alone. That's great. And it, and you are so right. That is one of the, you know, when you come from a family, right. And I felt the same way as I was going through, yeah. and I know so many of our listeners feel the same way you go through, you having your family and, and you have this, this mindset of what your life, what you expect your life is going to be. And then all of a sudden, you know, that ends. And then you're trying to figure out where, where are you going to be? You know, what, what's going to happen to you? Wow. So it's truly about the transition is what I'm starting to realize more and more. The transition of going from a relationship loss, going from you being what you thought your relationship was, then that transitioning into what your life is now and what the heck is it going to be in the future, right? Right. And that's what is so daunting to some. And then adjusting to really the, um, and, I, and I hate to say the loneliness, but the feeling of being singular, you know, having no one really around all the time. You might have good friends, you might develop other things, other, other people in your life, mm -hmm. other interests, but you're still in that singular type of mode. And that's something that really, truly takes an adjustment period, doesn't it? I think it does. I also think that the hardest, one of the hardest parts of the, about the transition is you're no longer a couple. Mm -hmm. You're just not. And everything about your life isn't, doesn't involve them. And yet we're fixated on them. Yeah. We're constantly thinking about them. We're still having conversations with them. And they're not in your life. They're not in your home. They're not in your bed. You, you're, you're not with them. So how do you disengage from that, of, of that fixation to focusing on yourself? Because it's so much easier to think about them. <laughs> it's so true. Well, and probably for years, that's exactly what you've done. You've thought about your family, you thought about your, your spouse. The other thing is for me too, I wonder if you felt, felt like this is that there were certain areas of, in our life that he took care of and that I never really made any decisions on. Sure. And so now I'm having to do all of those things. So that was a true, like when my first, I bought a car and that was like so daunting. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a, good for you. I bought a condo. Oh. I bought a condo and negotiated two oh, mortgages on that one myself. Yeah. Yeah. So and, those type of things, there's like, oh my gosh, I never made that kind of decision. Like what kind of car to get? Like, what do you look, what do you look for? What do you ask? So the research I did was tremendous, but you know, I'm very happy with what I, what I chose and that's what it's all about. Right. Being, well, it's so being empowering to make, to realize that, you know, I coach a lot of men mm -hmm. and for men, it's like, how do they plan a birthday party? How do they take a kid on vacation mm -hmm. or how do they um, navigate parent teacher meetings? Or just any of the, you know, the tween experiences. How do they deal with that? It, it's really fun to watch people um, get out of their comfort zone and try something new. Mm -hmm. Just and it's pretty exciting when you do when you do do that. It truly yeah. is. So let's talk a little bit about our topic now. Um, yeah. Making peace with the possibility of being single. Now, when I say that, sometimes people are very daunted to think, "Oh my gosh, for the rest of my life, I'm going to be single." Right. It's a uh, it's like a curse. Oh my goodness, you know, you're you're uh, you're single, and and people have different outlooks of what single is, right? What, sing, what single life can be for different people. So let's okay. talk a little bit about that. All right, so, so we have to put it into context, right? There are some people that have, that have left relationships which were incredibly traumatic, right? It might have been um, any, any form of abuse or addiction, right? And so for them, being single is the healthiest stand. For them because there's a lot of healing and recovery there's a lot of understanding the complexities around those experiences and for them they're so afraid to get involved mm -hmm. understandable we understand that for the average person leave in a re relationship we don't anticipate how much pain there is we don't expect that um, that fear of being vulnerable again, of making a mistake. So when I talk about making peace with the possibility of being single, it's about 
accepting everything that's happening to you. Like, and the first thing I think is to really appreciate how difficult divorce really is. I, I have this statement, and people have read my, my work have seen me write this before. Just because divorce is so prevalent doesn't make it easy. It is a deeply, deeply personal transition. And it, it has to change you. Because if it doesn't change you, you're going to end up doing it again. I call it our modern day rite of passage. So we have to respect the experience of divorce. We have to respect what it's teaching us, what it's forcing us to confront, our weaknesses, our strengths, our habits, our belief system, how what, our entitlement, right? And also our self-worth. In order to have a great life, we have to create that kind of person to have a great life. So we have to make peace with doing our work. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have to make peace with confronting ourselves at the end of every day and look in the mirror and say, I messed up today, or I did really well today. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I, I so agree. I agree with that about doing the work. Do the really work. You have to do the work. Yeah. yeah. And I had a colleague who once said to me, nobody wants to do any more work. Everybody's bored. Everybody's exhausted. They don't want to do more work. They don't want to do more work. And I was like, well, they don't really have a choice. Mm -hmm. You're either going to do your recovery and healing work or you're going to fall into the arms of somebody else where sex is phenomenal and it trumps everything else. And then you're going to repeat the patterns because the same person is going to show up. And you're going to attract the same kind of person with maybe different color hair, maybe a different height, maybe a different job, but the same type of person because it's familiar. Yeah. I like, I, I, I have the t-shirt. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> well, I've done that too, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I call it post-traumatic divorce disorder where we just keep repeating patterns. Right. Right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here's the thing. It's like everything we do, we have to we have to understand that there's a learning experience from that. And yeah. so we have to really ask ourselves, you know, vital questions in mm -hmm. order to be able to, to move through that pattern, to be able to, to change, make a shift there in our lives. And so you're, you're so spot on with that. So well, I think it even goes deeper than that mm -hmm. because not only do we have to shift in how we do relationship, how we do one thing is how we do everything. Hmm. So tell us a little bit more about that. So what I mean by that is if we're guarded in one area of our life, we're probably guarded and therefore not as successful in another area of our lives. If we're stingy with money, we're probably stingy with love. We're probably stingy with friendship. Mm -hmm. If we're hard hearted around our ex or women or men, then we're probably hard hearted around everybody, customers, colleagues, teachers, children. If we're overly vulnerable, overly needy, then we're probably overly needy at work with our customers or from our children. And it's, it's too much. We, we can't deal with a lot of this stuff. We can't deal with people's stuff. We, in, you know, we have an opportunity in this day and age, in this country, to take this very um, Western concept and really take it as an opportunity to change who we are in the world. Because we all imagine a bigger, better future. You don't leave a happy marriage, right? Nobody leaves a happy marriage. And two healthy people tend not to break up. Let's just call it what it is. So, but we all imagine we're going to fall in love with the right person and they're going to have the right kind of money and the car and the house and the body and the, they're going to be lovely. But we've got to get ourselves to that place. If we don't get ourselves to that place, 
we're going to end up being cynical and depressed and bitter and resentful and hate on the opposite sex or the same sex, depending on the relationship. So Very true. Very that's true. what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very well said. You know, it is, it is true. And I hear it all the time, though. What do you say about this comment? You know, a lot of the guys will say to me, well, I don't want to change. They have to accept me the way I am. <laughs> I love that. When they ever said that to me, you have to accept me. That. So how's that working for you? How's that you know? working for you? That's the, that's the retort. How's that working for you? Mm -hmm. You know, like um, I get I, I coach mostly men and I love to coach men. And I and um, I love to coach men because I help more women. I help their mothers, their sisters, their children, their daughters, their girlfriends, their future wife, their ex-wife. When you coach a guy and you get him on the track to want to learn and to shift and to grow, whew, I'm getting him ready for a, a woman is going to get a good man. I'm so excited about that. So, and, and I coach women too, but I, I really love coaching men, especially when they're resistant. Because once I can crack it open, I can get them to see that you do not really working. If it was working, you'd be with her still. Mm -hmm. If it was working, you'd know how to handle her. If it was working, you wouldn't be so upset. Right. Right. Very, very, yeah. You wouldn't be so hurt. Mm -hmm. And you know what, guys, they, they have a really tough time because they have to be so strong have to be so strong nobody wants a weak man da, da, la, 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 la. you know the noise we all have about that stuff mm -hmm. and i feel bad for them because they don't get taught how to be in relationship and so i feel it a real honor to teach that yeah it really help I, I agree you know and often when i when i get you know, in that statement where they say, oh, I don't want to change. You know, they have to accept me the way I am. I don't want to change that kind of thing. But then I think to myself, you know, and and I verbally say it at times, is that, but don't we all evolve? I yes. Mean, it's a new day. <laughs> every, every day we're, we're, yes. you know, we're not who we were yesterday. We're going to con continue to evolve. But so are we not actually, in essence, changing? Yes. And so, so then when you say something like that, then they're like, because, you know, men are very logical and they're right. like, Oh, yeah, that's me. You're right with that. Right. So, hmm. yeah. hmm. <laughs> I remember the day that I passed the seventh year. So how, how do I say this to you? So every seven years, every cell in our body changes, right? And there's something like, I, I'm probably going to misquote this. So the science geeks out there, forgive me, but it's like 75 trillion cells in our body. And I equate that to like how many stars are in our galaxy, right? So, And I, I it could be off on all of that. But the point is, is that at the seventh year mark, nothing in my body had slept with my kid's father. Everything was different. Energetically, I was different. I had different cells. I had different thoughts. Like, I, I remember waking up going, I felt there's always a palpable shift. And now I've gone through this a couple of times, so I know what I'm talking about. But there's a palpable shift that they're not part of who I am anymore. And... I, you know, I heard from a coach once and I use this statement all the time. Yesterday is as over as World War II. Just hopefully at the end of this video, every one of your viewers is going to be a different person. They will have learned something. Absolutely. I totally right? agree with that. Yeah, with every with every heartbeat, there's something that's right something different that comes that comes into our lives, and every time we look at something, we're seeing something different, you know, that we hadn't seen before. So to right. to have the essence of thinking that you will never, you never want to change, and you want to be so steadfast, you're you're really missing a wonderful opportunity of. Uh, really embracing all that are, that's around you. So yeah. I think it's just a defensive statement. Yes, that's it is. It is. And it's, and, and the thing is, we don't really truly want to get into a relationship to change somebody. Right. Because oh, if we, God. if we progress and we're in a relationship, we're not saying, okay, well, I pick you today. You're going to be the person I'm in a relationship with. And you know, you're going to change. We don't, we don't do that. It's just, you know, well, but, we don't consciously do that. No, we don't. But yeah. we often do that. 
Mm -hmm. especially women. Right. And then as we become into a relationship, we, yeah, we all start doing that. But that, men do that too. They absolutely do that too. But we're going to talk more about that when we come back, Laura. Okay. Because we've had a very exciting first half of the show and we really covered a, a huge territory. And so when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about let's be uh, making peace with being single, you know, okay. moving forward in our single life, how we can make, make peace with that and really embrace those around us because there might be a possibility we don't necessarily want to be single or we want to create a single life that's really meant for us. And uh, it's all about choices, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, absolutely. So we're going to be right back. I want to make sure I give contact information out for Laura here before we go. You guys can reach her at Laura at, and then it's Laura, L-A-U-R-A-B-O-N-A-R-R-I-G-O.com. And then again, her website is her name. It's Laura, L-A-U-R-A-B-O-N-A-R-R-I-G-O.com. So please, everyone, that's a contact information. Please reach out to Laura because uh, let her know that you've listened to her on the show and, you know, that you might be interested in possibly le learning a little bit more about what she does. And we hope that you'll do that. So we're going to go to our break. We'll be right back. You guys are listening to WGSN TV Going Solo Network. This is the Going Solo with CC show and I'll be right back. I think we're back. Hello, hello. Okay. I hit the wrong button. Oh my goodness. Okay, how do I fill the air? <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Well, you guys, you're listening to WGSN DB Going Solo Network, and I'm terribly sorry about that. We are on the uh, Going Solo with CC show. Our website is goingsolomedia.com. We have a wonderful guest here on it on the show here tonight. You know, things just happen and we just kind of roll with the punches, don't we? And that's uh, that's really what happens. You know, all about being single. You know, I think the reality is that even when we do things like this, when we have mishaps happen, that's mm -hmm. what happens in our lives, right? As we are going through relationship loss, we're moving through to that transition of building a new life for ourselves. And that's what we're talking about with our wonderful guest here tonight, Laura Bon. Bon Rigo. Rigo. Got it. Bon Rigo. Bon Rigo. Bon Rigo. I'll get it right towards the end of the show. Yes. Uh, you are a delight. You are a certified uh, divorce coach. You're an ICF, a certified life coach. You've been helping people. You really specialize in men, helping men, but you do help women. Yep. And, um, you know, moving through some of those transitions in life. And so tonight we're talking about making peace with the possibility of being single, the taboo of being single. And actually it can be be quite an exciting part in your life, can't it? It can. It really can. Uh, 
I remember when I was first told to sit on a bench, get on the bench. And the woman said to me, stop dating. I had, I had a relationship after my marriage that um, it, it was so on, it was so bad. And it really, it, it just made me stop and, and think, come on, you've got to get this together. And as you can see, that's a theme. I had to learn a lot. And the moment when she said that to me, I literally was like, what? No, no sex for six months? What? I haven't been single for 25 years. And she was like, yeah, no sex. No, nobody. And that went on for two and a half years. And then I dated a little bit and I noticed the men I was attracting, they were very different men, circumstances, class, careers, but they were the same personality. And I went, no. And I stopped dating for three more years. And I did that because I knew that I was the one that needed to do her healing work. And I focused on things, I always start clients with the real basics, eating, exercise, sleep, stress management. How are you taking care of this vessel that you live in? And then from there, are you living the kind of life that you feel you should be, that you want to be? Is this, are you doing what you think you always envisioned? And if not, why not? What can we do about that? And then we look into um, habits around relationship, belief systems around the opposite sex or the same sex, depending on the client and the relationships that they like. What, what is it that you do that keeps either attracting this negative kind of pattern or is repelling the, the kind of person you want? What are you doing? And so we talk a great deal about um, the dynamics between, in, the, in my situation, I typically coach people in um, monogamous relationships or they want monogamous relationships. Um, that's typically what I do. So how are you showing up? And let, let's give a, a cliched example so that I can make this a little more understandable. Um, a lot of women have a habit of smothering, mothering their men, mother smother, right? So I just want to use that cliche because that's it. And the thing is, is that if we, as, if this kind of woman doesn't know how to pleasure herself and have fun and be alive on her own, and she's going to repel a man or attract a really um, needy man that she can smother mother. But here's the rub. Typically, typically, men don't sleep with their mothers. <laughs> That's women... Women don't like to have sex with little boys. So if this is her habit and he is over it, then she's got to stop doing that, which was really, really scary for her because that's how she knows to be in relationship. Yeah, because, you know, you're so right because, you know, I think about it. You think about you're raising your family, right? You're raising your kids and you're very nurturing and you do all of these things. And then you you kind of stop and, and you don't stop and you just carry that over to to your relationship, that nurturing and taking care of and all of that kind of stuff. And And men like it to a certain degree, but not to the point of smothering. Well, what men want is to see their woman turned on and happy. Mm hmm. What men want is a woman who's attracted to him and can respect him. Mm -hmm. What men want is the appreciation of what he can provide. Not somebody who's going to peck him into order or tell him how to get dressed. He doesn't need that. Yeah. So this is just one example of like real concrete things we look at. And what has to be looked at if you're not getting what you want. And... 
it's okay if you want relationship then you got to kind of examine these things right if you don't want relationship that's fine you're fine do your thing right but that's just one small example um we could take it from the male the female perspective he's very domineering and controlling he doesn't let me make decisions well is it because he is confident in his decisions is it because um you don't ask to participate or is it that you're um um unaware of that a man's confidence in his decision making um your role in that debate isn't from an intellectual perspective but more of a feeling state this doesn't feel right to me can we talk about it right i don't it doesn't feel right so women have a hard time with that like i work with a lot of successful women and they're like wait 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 i'm a doctor i'm, I'm a lawyer what do you mean i my opinion matters i make more money than he does i'm like yeah how's that helping your relationship Mm -hmm. Right? Like, let, how's that helping him feel confident? Right? Yeah, so, very good. We talk a lot about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's scary to shift who you know yourself to be. So, you know, I have, again, it's a privilege to help people do that. Mm -hmm. And you do it very well. Very well. I, can see, I can see that for sure. Plus, on your website, you have a lot of great blogs that you have there, and they're yeah. uh, very good learning um, learning tools to be able to to go and yeah. do those. Yeah, so, I actually you you had mentioned the topic today, so I went back into my blogs, and I haven't I don't read them right, so I haven't read them in a while. So I was reading some of my blog. This is pretty good. Uh, I've been working on two books, um, so I haven't been contributing to my blog more recently, I needed a break from it. And um, I have a book geared toward men going through divorce and a book geared toward women going through divorce uh, that I've been working on for about a year now. Actually, it's about a year. And um, my coach is very tough on me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping to get that out in the next, um, I don't know, let's say next year, because you know how these things take time. Yeah, they definitely do. Well, I hope you'll come back and share the book with Thank us you. because I think it would be very good. I mean, I can imagine that it would be very good. You know, I really like what you had to say about the difference between men and women and how they look at, you know, they look at things. And it truly is, you know, we, we have to really start homing in on, on that understanding the differences and how relationships work and how to build relationships and um, that they make us, make us happy. And uh, we, we weren't, that's not something that we're actually taught. No. You know, at all. It's like you, it's like you're going down through this tunnel and you're bumping your head along the way constantly. Oh, that doesn't work. Oh, this doesn't work. And you're, and you're moving forward. But the reality is, is what a wonderful thing when you get to, feeling more at peace with yourself as you're, as you're either going through the transition of, of a relationship loss, that you're into that single mode, then you feel at peace with yourself, that you start to learn more about yourself, both men and women. I think it's, um, you know, it really is a wonderful thing. Well, you said something really important right there. You're in that single peaceful zone. Mm -hmm. And then you think I'm going to date. And just that decision alone can start the anxiety, right? Because all of a sudden, you're going to introduce somebody new into your life. So what you're really inviting in is growth, right? A, a good partnership will help you heal. And we aren't taught how to be in relationship. We learn how to be in relationship at the knees of our parents when we're that young. That's what, that's what we're getting. Mm -hmm. So we don't... You know, I always say the two most important things that we do as humans is have children and try to raise them in a in Western society in a two family household. We don't we don't go to school for that. <laughs> we should go to school for that. <laughs> I know. I, tell, I always tell my daughter, you didn't come with a handbook. I, mean, right. I, don't, I don't really know, you know, all this. I just try to do the best I can. And I'm really hoping that you'll do better than me. You know, I mean, that's right. That's what we can hope. So, so. You know, it's it's always great. I have taken clients, uh, men and women, 
from uh, heartbreak, uh, she's kicking me out or I'm leaving him, to going back into the marriage or all the way through trial, all the way through court, you know, negotiate. Not everybody goes through trial. Um, if they're working with me, they're not going to get to trial. Um, negotiation, separation, dating again, engagement again, marriage again. I have a client who's now pregnant. You know, it's like it's 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 a real privilege to shepherd somebody through these. And these transitions, they take so much longer than anyone wants. They take a really long time. I would say, you know, um, going from being married to being single is not for the faint of heart. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's a very, very difficult terrain, which is why a lot of people don't do it. Well, you know, Laura, I started thinking about this the other day and I thought to myself, you know, there's no end to growth. No. And so as we're, as we're building a relationship with someone, we have to keep growing and we have to keep, you know, keep figuring out, is this going to be good for me? Is this good for them? Is it, you know, how are we meshing together? And sometimes a little rocky, you know. It can be. And, but that's how we grow. We don't typically grow through the good times. Mm -hmm. Even though I always pray for the easy lessons. Please just send me the easy lessons, please. That's what I always pray for. Please, the easy lessons. I'm done with the hard ones, but we don't typically grow during the good times. And of course it's going to be rocky because you're, you're two people. I mean, we're full fledged human beings on our own, like with all sorts of things going on. So of course it's going to be rocky. Um, and the other thing that I want to say before we, we wrap up, I think it's so important, especially here, just because you choose to be solo or just because you choose to be single and you have a relationship over here, maybe you live together, maybe that's as far as you get. Maybe you don't go down the marriage aisle again. Maybe you don't stand in front of the justice of the peace. Maybe you don't make that commitment. Doesn't mean it won't hurt when it ends. See, so all those people that keep the back door open See, I really believe in the institution. I really am um, romantic and optimistic that two people can actually make it work. We see it over and over and over again. And the most successful people are in healthy relationships. Men especially, which is why men also crave relationship more than women. Statistically, men do better in relationship. So, if they're pairing up with women, there's got to be a bunch of women out there who do well too. Yeah. Right? That's funny because someone said to me, a guy said to me not too long ago, he says, well, I really don't like drama, you know? And I said, well, the you, you, women you, are about you, drama. If you date women, you better learn how a woman operates. <laughs> That's right. And it makes it very exciting and interesting. You, know? <laughs> right. you, you won't be bored if you have a woman in your life. And I'm, and again, I, I am careful about, heterosexual norms here. I'm trying to be really careful and sensitive because I work with mm -hmm. all couples. So, you know, there are male and female dynamics in every kind of relationship. Right. So, right. So mm -hmm. the, the feminine energy is dramatic. Right. <laughs> and you're going to get the, yeah, it, so the male and perspective she, right. into the, the female perspective. Yeah. You're going to have that, that kind of, uh, you know, I, I would say maybe electricity or whatever. You're you're definitely right. going to have that, but it's it's really trying to get the balance there of what what it is and create uh, what's important for to you individually in in the relationship, and um, and keep growing. I, I really do. I'm stressing it more and more to individuals yeah. that I think coaches have a place even after your you know, you found the one and you're building the relationship, even while you're building them, even while you're well into the relationship and it's growing. I think coaches have a place there because they're a sounding board. And, and when you get to where you're, you're confused with something or something doesn't feel quite right to you, of course, then I'm coming from a female perspective, but you, cause I'm dealing with feelings and, but if, but then you can use that individual as a sounding board to see if it's, if it's something that maybe internally you need to adjust, you know what I mean? I look, I look at coaches more as teachers and therapists mm -hmm. are dealing with really trauma and, and maybe historical trauma. 
Um, and I'm not trained to do that. So if I have a client who's been traumatized through a separation, then uh, they have to work with their therapist. Right. 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 So, uh, and I've done that before. So, but I think more of myself more as a teacher. That's how I feel. And so when you work with a, a person in a, a new relationship, you are the sounding board and you're bringing attention to why don't you try this tactic or have you, do you remember this that we talked about? Or, you know, um, stop judging him for being a guy. He's a guy. Guys aren't women. Don't make him be a woman. He's a guy. <laughs> like, right. so what that's, that's what I mean. It's like you, you yeah. realize that, hey, wait a minute. What I'm doing is really, you know, like it, it's it's something that I internally need to adjust. You know, I need to, to right. change I mean, I have way coaches. I have lots of coaches. You know, I have because I'm a person who's interested in growth and change. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about and I love the benchmarks. Like I can look at parts of my life now and look back and go. I did that all right. I'm doing this all right. I'm not the same person. I'm really mm -hmm. proud of myself. And so yeah. I like to share that with other people. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of sharing, let's make sure that we give them your contact information. Oh. And um, now you can do uh, you can do coaching anywhere, right? Because you yeah, I have clients all over the world, actually. So there's right. so a logic in that. So just contact Laura at Laura at, and it's Laura, L-A-U-R-A. -A. Her last name is B-O-N-A-R-R-I-G-O. And then, of course, it's .com is her email. And her website is the same way. It's L-A-U-R-A-B-O-N-A-R-R-I-G-O dot com. So we want to make sure we spell that out for the audio part when this is dropped down into audio only. So you guys, make sure that you reach out to her. Let her know that you've listened to the show. You know, ask her any questions that you uh, need to ask. You can go right on her website, contact her that way if you'd like, or send her an email. And, um, you know, check out our blogs and I'm looking forward to the book. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> that is great. So are there any last words you'd like to leave our audience tonight? I want them to have faith. Mm -hmm. Believe in the possibility they can get the kind of life that they want. And they're worth it. They're, they're entitled to have a great life and they have to work toward it. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you being on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. Well, you're quite welcome. You know, it went by so fast, like it always does. And we want to thank you all for listening to it. Again, you're listening to WGSN DB Going Solo Network. This is the Going Solo Show with CC. I am CC Schatz. We are so thankful to have you here with us each and every time. Our website, again, is goingsolomedia.com. Of course, you can reach me at goingsolonetwork at gmail.com. I love to get your emails. And also, I want to share with you our website, um, which has everything on it. And uh, we have the goingsolonetwork.com and also the uh, new site, which is goingsolocommunity.com. We hope that you'll join us there. And that will take you right through relationship loss, transition of dating and dating itself. So I hope you'll join me right there on Going Solo community. I'm really excited about our new site. So I am so pleased to have be with you each and every night. It is just an honor. And I hope that you'll enjoy all of the other shows that we have here on Going Solo Media. So I'll catch you later. Bye for now.